Hey everybody, welcome back to G Council, man. We got a great one for you, like always. Um, you already know, man, before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video, because ultimately it helps the channel grow, and everybody that's sharing the videos, everybody that's liking the videos, everybody that's giving us comments, thank you, we appreciate it. Go ahead and like it right now. All right, man, um, before we get started into today's topic, how was your week? I had a good week. Uh successful week uh did my yoga like i intended to uh overall good week with my macros uh it felt good uh it was it was my wife's birthday wednesday took her out she had a good time and we probably end up doing something today too so yeah okay, man okay. Good week. happy birthday happy birthday yeah man it's been a great week for me i um especially going into the topic, you know, we're talking about, I feel, I feel great. You know, I got back on the gym, then cut a couple pounds. I'm already seeing it. I feel like that water weight, you know what I'm saying? Especially off your midsection. That'd be like one of the first things to kind of start going. But um, that man, I'm just, I don't know. It's just been a great week. I'm feeling like I'm in a good space. I feel like I'm really, you know, starting to get to me, understand what it is that I'm trying to do in my quote unquote second phase of life. I want to call it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really exploring some opportunities and just just looking at it, man, and, and just being hopeful and, and thinking in abundance of everything that's about to happen and come my way. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah good week for me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man, let's um let's just jump right into it. Right. We know. <laughs> come on. Let's like. Touch on the elephant in the room. Right. Um, We have been in uh economic down downturn right um we know that a lot of the s p 500 especially the tech companies they're all right now you know have been laying people off cutting people so one of the beautiful things that we wanted to just kind of talk about is making sure that you stay you know relevant in these times and you know talk about some of the things that you can do to not only help your career but keep you thriving in a marketplace that's you know on a downturn um so yeah. Yep, and it got some it had a list of things that uh it talked talked through. Is right. Gonna, so yeah. You you see it. So I pulled up this article, right? And it's uh keeping your career moving up during an economic downturn. And so what we want to do is just kind of talk through, you know, some of the points here um to to help you guys. Yeah, you just got to click the uh, continue without signing up when you scroll down. Yeah, right there. Down, down. Where it's asking for your email and plug in and all that under ladders. Yeah. It's real small right there. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. typically most people would have probably signed up prior to even seeing that. That's the point, I, right? I didn't see it. And, and it's funny because when I was looking at it, that didn't pop up before previously. So, yeah. All right, we good to go. <laughs> so one of the things, man, you know, we could definitely touch on and talk about, which I think is no stranger, right? Working hard. Um, situations are happening. Working hard. I mean, I I think that goes without, you know, saying that's something that you should be doing anyways, right? Working hard, making sure that you're getting your assignments done, making sure hey, that before you, you before you go there, go mm -hmm. back up, go up one. I miss one. Yeah, go up one. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, because that, I mean, because that kind of sets the tone, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Esta establishing your value in your current role. Um, That's big. Because one thing we know that you have to do is assess yourself in the marketplace, right? And in your job. You know, are you that go-to person? Are you Kobe? Right. Right. You gotta be Kobe. You know what I'm saying? Especially, especially when the market is the way it is now. If you're not Kobe, you're accessible. You know what I'm saying? Think about it from that perspective. If you're not the top player, top two, three players, you accessible. Everybody else is accessible. Everybody else can be replaced at any point in time. So how are you making sure that you establish the value in your current role? What are you doing? Always think with an abundance, right? Always talk to, you know, your boss. There's subtle ways to make sure that 
you stay on the radar and we'll talk politics a little bit later because that's a real big one too, right? But um, establishing your role, establishing your guidelines, making sure that you're tracking everything that you're doing and showing, have your receipts, have your receipts, have your receipts. But I mean, of course we know as you establish your role, it's, it's just going to be, it, it, I mean, it's going to speak for itself too. But still, you can't always, you know, have it where your career depends on someone else. So you have to set the tone for your career. Yeah. So um, when it's talking about establishing values, I'm actually applying that today in real time. It's just really understanding that the the, the impact that I'm providing it's a it's aligned with what the current mission and objectives of the company is like looking so looking for those and so I may have some personal I may have some professional goals that I want to accomplish and I still will be trending towards that but really ensuring that because sometimes as as people when they're in their current job sometimes they want to pursue things and it is not necessarily a value to the company per se. And so you always want to be looking to be of value. And so it's like, but in order to be of value, you need to understand what are the areas of that the company may be that needs some support or help in. And maybe it might not be that that thing that you are the most excited about, but nobody else is really, and you may find a little niche where maybe you might be good at that you can go and feel and just step up and and even volunteer to say, hey, look, I, I cover that for you. You know, I, I'll take on that particular project because I see that's what we need in this particular period of time. And so what ends up happening is there's things that come up subtly and not so subtly. Sometimes announcements happen, but sometimes like your manager might reach out and say, hey, I need help here. You need to say yes, and I'll figure out how to do it. <laughs> like, and, and typically it'll help you get the support that you need to get it done. You know, uh, and and so that's kind of where it's finding like those little those little areas where the the business, your your manager, uh, your team, maybe it's a business that you're supporting. They have a specific need, and you can say, "Hey, I don't quite know how to do that, but I can rally some people together, and we can figure out how to do that together." You can lead the charge on that, and you can potentially learn a skill in the process. Or maybe you're already good at it, and you just need to help lean in in that area. And so when I hear adding value in your current role it don't mean just freestyling and doing what you want to do it's like making sure the things that you take on the company perceives as valuable right if that's how you make yourself uh more recession proof so to speak and just more valuable to the company if you're doing something that a person values it's hard for a person to like get rid of you or maybe you might be the last one out <laughs> like ah i don't I got to keep this one and this one, but right. if, if you, if you, cause they're not looking at it as, they're not looking at it as sometimes a leader leader basically say, Hey, look, it's one head count that you, we, we got to, unfortunately we got to let go. It's on you, which one, but I'm just letting you know, it's one that you got to get, you know, it's one that we got to let go and maybe do the severance thing. And so then from there, and so then from a manager, think of from if you were a leader, a manager, whatever, think about what you'd be thinking about. Okay, this person, this is my coach, they are my Serena, whatever. If you like, I can't get rid of them. But if this is, but if you rank 275 on the team, and, <laughs> hey man. And you and you've been kind of had been performing, you've already mm -hmm. kind of been injured a little bit had been detached you probably gonna be the first on the chopping block right i mean it's, it's this simple right three seconds left in the game last possession make the shot who win are you one of the people that are gonna go to to make that shot that's a fact if you're not you need to establish your value in your current role <laughs> yeah and so now that you know, so transitioning into the work hard, you know, so a part a part of that, like you were saying, that that's a natural progression once you leaning into the value areas, because it's it's not about quantity of work; it's about the quality of the work that you're doing, focusing on problems and bringing solutions to those problems, and you know, and of course, there'll be hard work in the midst 
of that. But you kind of you but you're working smarter and more strategic and focused mm-hmm. tackling things that are important in present day. And, and you know, because definitely we don't want to get it misconstrued just because we say it's work harder doesn't mean you need to work seven to seven. Right. Eight to eight. That's that's not what we're talking about. I mean, you just hit it on the head being strategic, making sure to get projects done time and within a a lot of time that you're given, you know, making sure that you're doing those things, you know, it's, it's pivotal because sometimes we think, okay, yeah, I work seven to seven, right? Like that's, yeah, I'm working hard, but how much are you really getting done in that seven to seven? So coming up with some, some, you know, some systems to put in place to help you get, you know, be more efficient with your time is definitely a great way. And that's working hard. Works yeah, smarter. And I'm, yeah. And it say, I'm reading this last sentence. It says that as leaders are pressured into making layoffs, they will undoubtedly start to start by getting rid of those with who have a poor work ethic. And so it's not, and I'm going to go a step further. It's, it's you, it's not just getting it done, it's getting it done with excellence. So it's like over delivering, <laughs> you know, like on what you said you was going to do. Uh, and so it's not just ch- a check in the box situation. It's, you know, if you ever been to a steakhouse, you know, the presentation, the experience from the waiter and like you get that wow factor, you know, when they ha- encounter with you through collaboration on projects, et cetera, et cetera. So like when you at the table eating, and they keep coming back and forth, making sure your water good, making sure you know your your food was tasteful, making sure it came out in a in a in a uh, timely fashion, making sure you're good, how you feeling, small talk, conversation. You have an overall the food is great, and you just have a, and it's a good presentation. So the quality, the excellence, and you know that what that 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 great feeling you have when you leave in a a, a, a really really nice restaurant. You want to provide that same energy and quality of work and body of work whenever you are at, at, at your at your job. Very true. Moving right along, focus on the profits, right? So we know this more is on the sales side, but when you're in an economic downturn, right, one of the things that they're going to be looking at is how much money you're bringing into the company. Um, how much profits are you making? And if you bring in a lot of profits, especially in an economic downturn, right, you're going to be there. Um, you're going to be there. And even on the flip side, if you are one of those people that are able to save the company money, you're going to be there. Me working in training and development, when the dollars get low, there's typically we can't outsource things, right? But the beautiful thing is, is that I could create those things myself. And so me being able to have that skill set to save the company money and be able to create some of these things myself, keep me valuable in the marketplace. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm going to take it to another. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, you're, you're right. And uh, cutting costs is one of those things of saving the company money. And, uh, and we'll, we'll expand upon that one when, when we get to that one. Uh, but your yeah, folks on the profits, that's on the sales side. If you tie to sales, if you generate leads or even if you in sales or you in, not quite in sales. First of all, we all in sales. We all always selling something. But specifically when it comes to sales tied to revenue and, and the company needing to make money, either you're in it directly or maybe you have ways that you could help generate sales. Even when you ain't in the role that you're in, is there a way that you can help drive profits, whether that be. You may have a, you know, you may have some people that's in your network that might be willing to do business with your company. Well, you might not officially be in a sales role, but maybe you can make an introduction. You know, like so, it's things that you can do to get creative that could that can really mean that can be meaningful for you and the company. And you kind of looked at as one of those, you know, very important people that hey, three seconds left. I, I really still got to keep this person because I, I trust them to shoot the rock. All right. Or like you said, thinking about it, especially tying it into what you do, there could be a situation, especially on the sales side, you find a loophole where maybe they're able to, you create a training that drives profit margins, right? Um, And give that training. And now you give everybody that training and now you see the profit margins going up. 
So once again, now you Kobe again. You know, you're Kobe. Like, yo, this <laughs> we need that because we know he clutch. When he come in, he going he gonna to hit that three, uh, uh, hit that layup too, whatever you want to call it. So, but we know in a recession, in a downward turn economically, they focus in on them numbers. They focus in heavy on them numbers. <laughs> right. And so on the next one is, you know, just talking about being flexible. Man, they got us marketing Tylenol PM, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, being flexible, you know, uh, especially in these times, what you was doing previously in your role and your scope might not be as important and the company might need to do a pivot to address current things that's happening. You have to ensure, because with change, people sometimes could be a bit resistant to what's and so it's like, well, we got just all this new stuff. And, and if you if you don't make that change, that 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 pivot quick enough, you can be looked at as a weak link and more negative. And, and when you're negative, when people are trying to like grow through and 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 maneuver through a, a downturn, it's a great way to sabotage yourself. Like if you need to like I get it emotionally, even if you're doing something you really don't want to do. Because it's a new season. Because sometimes you just used to doing a certain thing, and they like, hey, scrap that. That was that was 2022. This is what we need today. Like, and you just need to lean in with it. And it's okay if you have your feelings about it, but you definitely need to go through those. Because when change happens, it's it, it's a it's a chart that you can look at, and it shows you when change happens, you go through these this emotional cycle. Well, you need to shorten that curve of that emotional cycle. And one of the ways to do that is maybe talking to a coach or talking to someone to help you process that pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And it probably shouldn't be your manager because they would be probably come off complaining, <laughs> uh, you know, or even coworkers or unless you have some trusted people that you're talking to them about it and they trust the allies for you and they helping you navigate it but it's a safe space where they don't go back and tell your manager, like, yo, this person is naked. Like, I, what's going on with this person? So it's like, let the intent be whoever you communicating it through. It's just like to work through it. So I get it. It's a real thing, but you got to be flexible. Like, to because the company is sometimes trying to be agile, maybe mm -hmm. less resources. Maybe it's going to be more of a load on you. So maybe it's something that you typically used to outsource, but now you got to you got to take it on more. And if you're not careful, it can come off as complaining and during a recession or a perceived recession or what have you. Uh, that's a that's a surefire way to get let go sooner rather than later. So one of the things that definitely helped me with this during coaching, because I would definitely take my work personal. Right. So when you had those pivots, you'd be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe this is happening. And so working through that process with my coach was OK, Adrian. You work for this company. This company is paying you to do a service, paying you to do a job, right? I know you may be deep into the project, but they want to pivot. They want to go into another direction. Can you do the project? Yeah, well, I can do it. You know, it might take a little bit more time, you know, for me to adjust based off of the time we was working on this. Okay. Are you still getting that paycheck? Yeah, I'm still getting that paycheck. They're still paying you for a service. Now, the service is for the company. The company comes first, so their wants come first. You're working for a company. Don't get so emotionally tied to your projects that you're given, right? And so that was something that I worked on to where now, if I'm three weeks into a project and I only got three more weeks to finish it, but they're like, nope, we're scrapping it, we're moving on, I don't take it so personal because I'm here to do a job for this company, right? I can't take what the, the company wants me to do, you know, as far as, you know, switching projects or moving around to heart. I have to be flexible because at the end of the day, they're, they're paying me to execute. It's just that simple. So hopefully that can help someone with the whole being flexible because we know this happens a lot, you know, especially depending on you where you're working that, hey, you could be working on a project three, four, five. You might even been working on it for a year. And they come and say, yeah, nah, we scrapping that. We moving in this direction. 
And you got to be okay with that. You can't take it personal. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely a fact. That's definitely a fact. Ooh. This one right here. Yeah. You you know, you you cannot be a lone ranger. Uh if you're at home in your own safe space, sure. You know, uh but you're at home, you're not really trying to get that done. In a comp in a corporate setting, you have to build relationships with people. You have to connect with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're working with people, people work with people who they want to work with. And you have to have those strategic allies. You got to have like be cool with managers, be cool with coworkers. You know, first of all, these are people that you're going to be working with, you know, eight to 10 hours a day. Uh, so with that being said, you want to ensure that you have a good relate working relationship with them. That way you enjoy the people that you work with and they enjoy you. Uh, and so that's the first thing is just your peace of mind. But to the business matter in terms of like how that could be impactful during a uh, downturn is like. People trust me. There's behind the scenes conversations where if a stack ranking needs to happen, that's going to play a part because you could potentially be legit on the skill side. And if your uh, interpersonal skills is not great at all and you you really a butthole to work with, unless you was on a sales team and you a rainmaker or you freaking CEO or top, top executive, executive level, they probably going to get rid of you. You know, because that's going to be a perfect opportunity because they probably perceive you as the word toxic. Uh, but you get, and so like if it's more people that don't like you than people that can vouch for you, you probably out of there. Uh, you probably yeah. out of there quick. Uh, being, you know, being in, yeah. under, this, being, under yeah. the guise of, you know, unfortunately, you know, we got to let you go. You know, um, you know, we, we you know, we, we going to muster up the severance for you, but we got to let you go. Uh, you know, and so it, what what ends up happening is it it like the broad, hey, you know, we going through some different times. It could be many different reasons why they let you go, and it and it could have been they probably could have kept you on, but it was under the guise of you know we got to get rid of this person, this person, you know, and so like they not they don't they don't build good relationships, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go ahead and cut that person because it's at will. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so it's at and will employment. So, you know, it, building relationships is important. And also, man, the reason that's important to build relationships is because people change jobs. Like, people change, people change jobs, they pivot, and sometimes they bring people with them. And you might be one of those people that you have building a relationship with people and you go somewhere else and you might bring someone else with you. So, the reason why it's important to build relationships because if you're looking to play a, a long-term game in your career, you might not be at your current company forever, but your relationships can be long-lasting. So think of it from a long-term perspective. So like networking is critical, but you definitely want to want to make sure you know the key players in uh, your company. Right. And so like when you're in your name, chain of command as name well. You spoke about like, your name is spoke about when in rooms that you're not even in, but also that going back to adding value, adding value to key players in the company from your, from where maybe you're reaching to your manager, maybe you even connecting with your manager's manager. So they have visibility insight to the value, but maybe it's spoken because you're your own advocate and kind of talking about some of the things you're doing for the team just to make sure they understand the value that you're bringing, but then also having a conversation with them and just saying, what's important to you today? Like what, you know, what, what are you working on? Maybe there's something that I could do to help. What's keeping you up at night? Like when I'm talking to, to VPs and, you know, put pe you know, these people up the chain, I'm asking them those type of questions. I'm not, Hey, let me pick your brain. No, I'm going to ask you what's top of mind for you. What's keeping you up at night? what initiatives is important to you during this particular fiscal year? And then I'm reverse engineered and see if there's somewhere I can, you know, maybe add value there, you know, so that that's really how you got to move. And that's how you build that 
that political equity or social equity amongst people that you work with. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay. So this from this perspective, you know, being in leadership roles, I have definitely ranked people that is like, yep, I'll get rid of you. I'll get rid of you. You know, I won't. And not necessarily the 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 person that's left standing had the, the best skill set, but they had the great personality. They were easy to work with and they worked hard. They didn't necessarily have the best skill set for the job, um, but their personality, you're like, yeah, I'm rocking with this person which kind of takes us into the next one. Cause you're like, okay, this person has, you know, the personality, they're easy to get along with, to work with anything you ask them to do, they're on it. You know, now you just need to expand their, their, their skills. And you feel like, okay, we could show them that we can help you with that. We can help you build, expand your skills, looking at different things, right. That you could do to improve in a job. So finishing off that building relationships, man, sometimes, Look, man, you got you can't be a long ranger. You can't think just because my skill set is better than everybody else, I can do what I want to do and it's going to all work out. I ain't got to build relationships. You need to build relationships because if you're kind of hard to work with, that could be a detriment to you. Yeah. But um how we doing on time? We uh, do part 2. We got seven and a half minutes left. All right, so we talked about, yeah, so we will cover uh, expand your skills. So with expanding your skills, that's that's self-explanatory. You really got to have a growth mindset. And maybe the skills that you developed up to this point were important and, and it had a need in, that, in a particular season. But maybe you there's a, some new set of skills that you need to learn and develop that fits what's important to companies in this particular point in time. Yes, you can have nice to have skills that may be more leisurely, but sometimes it's what is the necessity right now and the need right now with the company? And then do I have those skills to be able to be up to, to task to get it done? So first to your point, you got to have a growth mindset to do that, to lean in. So now you got the personality, you're easy to work with which means you probably should have a growth mindset to expand your skills. Uh, and if that's there, you're good. Uh, so expanding those skills, and it might take taking courses, online courses, internal resources with the company, being a part of training trainings and things like that. But the biggest thing I'll say with, when it comes to those type of things, as soon as you learn it, you gotta, you gotta do it. Like, so maybe take in a little bit information or whatever, then actually, Put that to work. Like, so if you could put yourself in practical situations to kind of reduce that learning curve as well. Everybody learned different, but uh, whatever way that may be, but make sure that translates to you actually doing something and it just doesn't stay in your head. That way right. it's beneficial for yourself and the people that's around you. So research it. So whatever it is that your work, you know, your current work is, research, um, you know, what the top 2%, 3%, 5%, whatever it looks like, what are the skill sets that they have? So do your research, right? Look into it and figure out how can you expand? What would be good? So not only in your company, current company, but start looking, you know, hey, around for what other companies are looking for as well and start making sure that you're expanding your skill sets to meet the marketplace. So not only your company, but the marketplace as a whole. Right. So. so yeah, cutting costs. So this is the one that you were talking about because the other one was help with profits. Now this side is cutting costs. I'm I'm gonna give you an example of what I what I've done in the past of uh, being being in the uh, recruiting space. So obviously I wasn't directly tied to revenue per se, but what I did was I reverse engineered it. So we had so we would outsource heavily to staffing agencies at a previous company. And, you know, we would spend, you know, half a million to a million dollars on agency fees, right? Well, I had worked for an agency previously. So when you're on the agency side, you eat good, <laughs> you know? Uh, and so you you want them to outsource, companies to outsource. But, and what it is, is, it's hard to fill positions and companies are trying to decide, okay, I'm paying this person whether they have a salary or they per hour. The money that I'm paying them how much time is taking them to find that hard to find position 
when they can focus on an easier role and we can outsource those harder roles because that's what they specialize in. And so I just want to make sure that the current employee is being efficient enough to get, because maybe they can close, you know, five or six easier to fill roles opposed to spending all this time on this one position and it's still these other ones that need to be filled. So they're kind of think making that cost, you know, comparison on like, okay, yeah, maybe it is worth to out outsource, um, you know, if they're not getting any traction on the road. So not only did they spend the time on the road, they didn't even get it filled and we still have the need. <laughs> so what I did was, because I, I came from an agency side, what I did was I came in always looking to save the company money. And so what I did was I would keep the hard positions and I would fill them. All the other all the other people on the team, they kept outsourcing it and just because right, when you work for a company, it's like it's the company's money, it's not my money, right? Like, but I never thought like that. I always was like being thoughtful is like, okay, I always kind of treated it like my money because it can be your money. So what I did was I put together a business case and over a period of time, I kept doing that. Then I came to my, I came to my manager and I showed him a business case of how much money I saved the company because I wasn't outsourcing it just loosely without thought. And I negotiated myself a raise on the spot. Of course, they had to go up and they was like, hey, this is a, you making a perfect point. Like if we can make, if we can bump you up 15, 20, I think it'll be worth it because you say this triple what, you know, what we'd be paying you. And if you keep on doing that, you're going to keep on saving us money. I actually negotiated a raise during like an off peak season where it wasn't like uh, annual evaluations. And I got a, I got a raise that way. So cutting costs, if you can demonstrate how you're cutting costs, that's crucial for a company if you're not in a revenue generating, um, a role. And so if there's ways that you can do that and show that and put together business cases, maybe not necessarily for you to get a raise in this scenario, but if you could just show like, hey, look, this is how I'm cutting costs, you know, uh, for us, you know, then it's a good thing for sure. Okay. okay. How are we doing on time? So, yeah, I think that's going to pretty much be where we kind of conclude this first part and then we come back with with part two so stay tuned make sure y'all like subscribe make sure to comment let us know if this resonate with you guys as well too as far as how to stay relevant you know in an economic downturn especially thinking about what you need to do are these things hitting the mark for you all right stay tuned to part two i will catch you later peace All right. All right. So we'll come out and go back yep. in. Okay. Yep. Let me see.